basics of time integration. Let's recap. In the previous video, we looked at few examples of semi-discrete equations, for example, the heat conduction, mechanical deformation, and diffusion. Also shown in this slide is the governing equation of a simple pendulum in terms of the angle theta, g the gravitational constant, l the length, and on the right hand side we have the expression for the mass spring damper where m is the mass, c is the damping, and k is the stiffness of the spring. And now the question is how do we solve these equations? These equations are continuous in time. We can do something analogous to the discretization in space, the so-called time stepping. The simple basic idea is to divide the timeline into discrete steps. And these steps in between them are approximated. Let's look at the example of a simple harmonic oscillator. Basically, this is nothing but a mass spring damper without the damping term. Shown below is the analytical solution for this simple harmonic oscillator, which is simply u0, which is the initial displacement, and multiplied by the cosine of the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass times t. Now, let's look at a specific time in this timeline, Tn. And let's take a snapshot out of this, Tn minus 1 to Tn plus 1. We know that the displacement at Tn minus 1 is Un minus 1, the displacement at Tn is Un, and the displacement at Tn plus 1 is Un plus 1. Based on these quantities, we can construct differences. The difference in the displacement at u n and n minus 1, the difference in the displacements at u n plus 1 and u n, and the differences in time. If the differences in time are constant, we could also denote that as delta t. The expression in green is basically the rate of change of the green curve. And the expression in blue is the rate of change of the blue curve. So in our case, because it's a straight line, it's a constant. That means this expression is valid along the curve from un minus 1 to un. However, if this curve was much more curved, that means no more a straight line, no more a linear line. If this was the case, then the expression un minus un minus 1 divided by tn minus tn minus 1. The difference in green is not valid at each point or not equivalent to the rate of change of the green curve. So there are two ways in which we can assign these rates of changes to this difference as long as the delta t is small enough. We have the so-called forward difference where we assign the difference un minus un minus 1 divided by delta t to the velocity at u dot n minus 1, which is the forward difference. And we also have the backward difference. We assign the same difference un minus un minus 1 divided by delta t to the velocity at n. This is why it's called the backward difference. Having specified the differences and two methods to relate these differences to the rates of changes, let's get back to a simple harmonic oscillator. The second order equation is m u dot dot plus k u is equal to zero. Let's neglect the external force for the time being. This is a second order equation in time. However, we can convert the second order equation to two first order equations. So you have m v dot, which is the same as the acceleration, but represented now in terms of the so-called velocity. And u stays u, which is the displacement. However, we have to include, in contrast to the second order equation, a new equation. 
the new definition of the velocity v has to be equal to the first derivative of u to make things consistent. Once we have the first order expressions, we can write this in the matrix form, which makes it much simpler later. So we write the displacement u and the velocity v in terms of a vector y. k can represent the stiffness matrix and m can represent the mass matrix. So you have m times y dot is equal to ky, which is simply the matrix form of the first order equations. We can still simplify this expression as y dot is equal to gy, where g is simply the inverse of the mass matrix times the stiffness matrix. We can solve this first order differential equation using the forward Euler scheme. So first let's do a time discretization. The first order differential equation, the continuous form y dot is equal to gy has to be discretized. That is, it is written at n. So y dot n is equal to gy n. Now, if we introduce the difference, the forward difference, into the above first order differential equation, we obtain the second equation, y n plus 1 is equal to y n plus delta t g y n. Thus, if you know your velocity or the displacement at y n, we can compute the new displacement the new velocity at time y n plus 1. This is your first prediction. If we introduce the backward differences, we get the backward Euler scheme. So basically, we write the first order differential equation is valid at y n plus 1 instead of y n, which was done in the forward order scheme. However, by introducing the backward approximations, we see the expression that we obtain is slightly different. Here, you could compute using the forward order, the displacement at n plus 1 using the displacements at n. However, this expression is an implicit expression. So, we have to take inverses. Here, we have chosen delta t small enough such that the displacements at un minus 1 and the displacement at un are connected by a straight line. That means they are linear. But in reality, we can never ensure that these displacements between the time steps n minus 1 and n are linear. If it is not linear, the backward Euler method and the forward Euler method, using them to solve this first order differential equation, we are making a huge error. That is why we have the so-called predictor corrected Euler method, which approximately tries to correct the error, but but we can ever ensure that the error is zero. So what does the predictor corrected Euler do? What it does is we make a prediction using the forward Euler method, which is simply the first equation, and then using this prediction to correct the solution using a simple averaging scheme. So we can extend this methodology of correcting the solution using multiple steps. In the predictor corrected Euler method, it is a single step method. But we could also introduce intermediary steps in between the time steps n and n plus 1. The fourth order Runge Kutta method uses four different slopes and uses an average of all these four slopes to compute a superior slope k that could be used to correct the problems and the errors that we could create 
due to an incorrect determination of the slope when using the Euler methods. This is an explicit method, very versatile and if you are solving a first order equation, you should definitely use the RK4 method. But this method is computationally not efficient if we want to solve higher order methods for which other methods are much more suitable. Now let us program these three methods and compare them in the exercises.